In this personal website tutorial, I'm going to be going over how to create a personal website in WordPress step by step from start to finish. I'll be showing you how to access professional pre-made WordPress website templates to make creating your personal website an easy process. I'll also be going over how to create your personal website using one of the most popular drag and drop editors, a limiter page builder, so you can build a professional looking personal website via drag and drop. The great thing about this personal website tutorial is it is extremely easy to follow along with even if you have no experience in starting and creating a personal website. At the end of this video, you will have your personal website successfully created. The first step I'm going to cover is how to choose and register your own domain name for free. A domain name is the name of your website. For example, the website name for YouTube is youtube.com. Step two, I'll be going over how to choose a hosting provider. An easy way to think of hosting is it's like the physical storefront of your website. To have a website, you have to have hosting. Step three is going over building your site with WordPress and creating your WordPress website using professional pre-made templates and building your site using the most popular drag and drop editor. Let's get started with the personal website tutorial for beginners video. The first thing you want to do to create your site is to click the link in the description below to be taken to Bluehost so you take advantage of our exclusive Bluehost discount where you'll be getting a free domain name and up to 73% off web hosting for your website. Make sure you click the link in the description to get this great deal. A little disclosure, the link is an affiliate link, meaning I receive a commission from Bluehost at no extra cost to you. Plus you'll get an awesome Bluehost discount. A little about Bluehost. Bluehost powers over 2 million websites worldwide and over 850,000 blogs around the world. They are also recommended by WordPress.org since 2005. They provide 24-7 support via chat, email, and phone, and they have a 30-day money-back guarantee. If for any reason you're unhappy, you can cancel and get a refund within the first 30 days. Once you click the link in the description below, you'll be on the Bluehost page. Click the Get Started button. You'll now be on the Bluehost Plans page. You'll see four different plans you can choose from. The Basic, Choice Plus, Online Store, and Pro Plan. You'll see the Bluehost hosting terms you can choose from are 12 and 36 months. You'll get the $2.95 pricing with the 12 month term. The Basic Plan is a great plan if you're going to have just one site. This plan comes with one website and 10 gigabytes of SSD storage. The Choice Plus plan allows unlimited websites and comes with 40 gigabytes of SSD storage. The Choice Plus plan comes with free domain privacy, free automated backups for one year, and malware scanning. Domain privacy protects your personal information from the public and will show Bluehost default contact information instead of yours in the public who is database. The automated backup We'll back up your site daily and will allow you to restore your site to a previous backup with a click of a button in case something happens to it like a website crash or an editing mistake. Malware scanning will scan your website for malware on your site and notify you if malware is found. The online store plan comes with unlimited websites, 100 gigabytes of SSD storage, and everything the Choice Plus plan comes with. This plan is good if you're going to have an online store as it comes with a bunch of extras like an exclusive store theme, store analytics, and $450 worth of e-commerce plugins for your online store like unlimited products, secure online payments, bookings and appointments, shipping labels, product search and filtering, gift cards, wish list, and customer account creation. Something I'm going to note is you can have an e-commerce site with the basic, choice plus, or pro plan as well. You just won't get the extra e-commerce features the Bluehost online store plan provides. The pro plan comes with unlimited websites, 100 gigabytes of SSD storage, and features such as the domain privacy, daily backups, and malware scanning. The Pro Plan also includes a free dedicated IP and optimized CPU resources. With a dedicated IP, 
Instead of your site sharing the same IP address with others, you'll have your own IP. Optimized CPU resources is good for high traffic sites or resource heavy sites. The Pro Plan provides more speed and power for your site. For most, the basic, Choice Plus, or Online Store Plan is what you want to choose from. You can always upgrade to the Pro Plan as your site traffic grows to a high volume. I'm going to choose the basic plan for this tutorial. Once you decide on a plan to choose, click the Select button. You'll now be on the domain page where you can choose your free domain name for your site. You can type in and search available domains under the create a new domain. If you already own the domain name, you can enter it in where it says use a domain you own. If you can't decide on a domain name, you can click the create my domain later link and you can choose your free domain name at a later date in the Bluehost dashboard. Click next to proceed to the next step. You'll now be on the create your account page. You now want to input your account information. Next is the package information section. You'll see domain registration free, as well as the Let's Encrypt SSL certificate being free. Next is the Bluehost Package Extra section. What you see here can vary on the plan you chose, as some plans come with some of these. Or if you didn't choose a free domain name, domain privacy won't show. All these Bluehost Package Extras are completely optional and up to you whether you want any of them or not. First is Domain Privacy Plus Protection. I do recommend Domain Privacy Plus Protection as it'll keep your personal information private so that spammers and telemarketers won't have access to your personal information and contact you by phone and email with offers of their services. When you register a domain name, no matter what company you choose, the domain goes into the public who is database as domain names are regulated. If you select Domain Privacy Plus Protection, it'll show Bluehost default contact information instead of yours. Highly recommend Domain Privacy Plus Protection. Next is Site Backup, also known as CodeGuard Basic. This will back up your site daily and you can restore your site to a previous backup with a click of a button with their one-click restore. An example of where this package extra can be good is if your site gets hacked into or you mess something up while creating it or editing it, you can restore it to the version right before whatever happened took place and everything will be back to normal. The next add-on is Yoast SEO Premium. Yoast is the number one WordPress plugin for SEO. Something I want to note is Yoast SEO is a free plugin you can download in WordPress. Yoast SEO Premium comes with additional features such as full access to Yoast SEO Academy that helps you learn about SEO, 24 seven premium support. It'll save time and spot ranking opportunities with Yoast SEO workouts. Prevent your visitors from ending up on dead links. Content quality and link suggestions as you write your content. You can view your blog posts and pages as they would show on search engines and social media posts to help you optimize better. In my opinion, the Yoast SEO free version is all you need as it is super helpful in guiding you to optimize your site for SEO. Next, you'll see single domain SSL. Bluehost does come with a free SSL certificate for your site, so this add-on isn't necessary unless you want to upgrade to a positive SSL certificate, which will allow you to show a site security badge on your site if you'd like. And with the positive SSL certificate, you'll have a $10,000 limited guarantee warranty by Komodo, which protects your customers. Next, you will see SiteLock Security Essentials. This add-on checks your website daily for malware and protects your site from hackers and malicious attacks. It will notify you if your site has been hacked into and malicious code has been placed into it. SiteLock Essentials also removes malware automatically. This add-on can be beneficial and give you peace of mind if your site were to get hacked into and malware is placed on it. It isn't necessary though. The next add-on is Google Workspace Business Starter. This package extra provides you with an email address ending in your domain name along with other features provided by Google Workspace such as Gmail, Calendar, Chat, Cloud Storage with Drive, 
video conferencing with me, and many more Google Workspace features. I do want to note that Bluehost does come with free email addresses ending in your domain name, so this add-on isn't necessary unless you really want to utilize all the added features with Google Workspace. Next, enter your payment information in and click the Submit button. Bluehost will now email you your Bluehost receipt. You are now directed to a page where you can create your Bluehost account so you can log into the Bluehost dashboard where you can begin in building your site. Click the Create Your Password button. Enter a password to be used for logging into WordPress. Accept the terms and conditions. Click the Create Account button. Your Bluehost account has now been created. You'll not be on this page where you want to click the Create Your Website button. You'll not be on a page where it'll ask you how much help you need with building your site. Feel free to click the one that you want. You can also click Skip This Step. I'm going to click Skip This Step. The next page, it'll ask you the primary purpose of your site. You can select one if you'd like. If you click into the Other tab, a drop down will show giving you more options. Under this, you can also click Skip This Step if you'd like to. I'm going to click Skip This Step. You'll now be on the Create a Website page. You can select what type of website it is and who you are creating the site for if you'd like. Click the Continue button or skip this step. You'll now be on a page where you can name your site along with putting in your site's tagline. You can always fill this out later, so no worries if you aren't sure on this yet. Click continue or skip this step. You'll now be on a page where you can select a theme for your website. There's a bunch of pages of themes you can go through. You can also choose a theme in the WordPress dashboard. I'm going to be showing you a pre-made professional WordPress themes you can use and create your site via drag and drop. Feel free to choose a theme now if you see one you want or click skip this step. You'll now be in the Bluehost dashboard. You'll see the login to WordPress button in the top right. Click this to go to the WordPress dashboard so you can start creating your WordPress site. You can also click my sites in the left side menu. Click manage site. Click the login to WordPress button in the top right. You'll now be in the WordPress dashboard where you can begin in creating and building your WordPress site. Now we want to pick out a theme to begin creating a site. To pick out a theme for your site, on the far left you will see tabs. Find the appearance tab and hover over it. Click themes as this is where you can pick out a theme for your site. Next, click add new theme. You'll now see WordPress themes you can choose from. There's thousands of free themes to choose from. Now I want to show you how to access free professionally designed WordPress themes and how to edit them easily with drag and drop editor and how to make any of these themes a personal website. Type in Astra in the search field. Click the install button. Once it is done installing, click the activate button. Once it is done activating the theme, you want to find the plugins tab in the side menu. Click add new. In the search field, type in starter templates. You want to click install on it, then click activate. Hover over the appearance tab in the side menu. Click on starter templates. You now want to click the Build Your Website button. Choose Elementor for the page builder. It'll now showcase a bunch of WordPress themes you can build your site with using drag and drop. You can type in the type of website you want to create to pull up templates based on that. You'll see a bunch of categories you can hover over and select to build your site. If you click a theme, It'll show you what it will look like so you can preview it. Click the X button to go back to the themes page. You'll see personal sites as a category. From the drop down, you'll see the different subcategories under personal sites you can choose from. 
I'll click personal sites to bring up all the personal website templates. Something I want to mention, any of the templates, no matter the category and what they are called, can be used for your personal website. You can easily change and edit the templates to what you like when creating your personal site. Just find a template you like and then you can start making it your own no matter what category the template is in. Now let me walk you through the steps on how to choose your template and build your personal website with the drag and drop editor Elementor Page Builder. Select the theme you want. I'll choose this one. You can upload a logo if you'd like. You can do this at a later time, so if you don't have one now, no worries. Click the skip and continue button. You now want to choose the colors and font for your site. You can update these at a later time or change them whenever you'd like. I'll choose this one for this tutorial. Click the continue button. You'll now be on the tell us a little about yourself. You don't have to fill this out if you don't want to. Just make sure under advanced options, you have each one selected. Click the submit and build my website button. It'll begin building your website. Once it is done, you'll be on the congratulations page. Click the view your website button. It'll now take you to your website and what it looks like. Before we begin editing, we want to turn on some features in Elementor to make the editing process even easier and improve your site performance. Up at the top, you'll see your site title name. Hover over this and click Dashboard. Find the Elementor tab in the left side menu and hover over it. Click Settings. Click Features. Select Activate All. This will activate an easier editor for creating your site along with performance features to help your site load faster. Scroll down and click the Save Changes button. Now let's go over how to make edits to the WordPress theme and how to use the drag and drop editor to create your site. From the WordPress dashboard, hover over your site title name up at the top. Click Visit Site. To make edits to your site, click the Edit with Elementor tab on the top of the page. It will now bring you to the drag and drop editor where you can create your site quick and easy. To make edits to a part of the page, just click where you want to make edits and start making edits. I can change I'm web developer Natalie E. Watson to I'm designer demo name. Next, I'll click the image, hover over the image and click the trash can icon if you want to remove the image. Click over the image and you can upload a photo to place here or click media library to upload images already uploaded in WordPress. I've uploaded an image into WordPress for this tutorial. I'll go ahead and select it to be uploaded. I'll click the select button. You'll now see the image uploaded on the site. If you want to edit the social media icons, click on them. If you want to remove any, click the X button. To edit one, click the one you want to edit. I'll click LinkedIn. Where you see link, you can input the LinkedIn URL that it will link to. If you click the settings icon next to the link, you can select if you want the link to open in a new tab or be a nofollow link. If you want to add a social media icon and profile, Click the Add Item button. Where you see the icon check mark, click over this area. You can now choose an icon to use for this. In the search field, you can type in what you are looking for. I'll type in Facebook. It'll pull up Facebook icons. You can upload your own icon by clicking the Upload button. I'll click the X button. I'll scroll down a bit on the page. You can select what you want over on the left and drag it in wherever you'd like it. If you right click on an area, you can delete it if you don't want it. By right clicking, 
you can duplicate something if you need to duplicate it. If you click the plus icon here at the top in the editor, it'll bring you back to the elements you can drag into the page. You can drag something over to somewhere else on the page by selecting it and dragging it over to where you want it. I'll drag a text into the page. If you click to edit the text, you'll be able to make edits to the text like make it bold. You can link out a text to somewhere. If you click the settings icon, you can choose to have the link open in a new tab if you'd like. If you click toolbar toggle, it'll give you more options like changing the alignment of the text, changing the text color. You can undo and redo changes here. If you click style at the top, you can then make more changes to the text. If you click the pencil icon where you see typography, where you see family from the dropdown, you can select different fonts for the text. Where you see size, you can change the sizing of the text. Next, let's go over editing the button. I'm going to click into a button. You'll be able to change the name of the text. You can link the button out to where you'd like it. If you click the settings icon next to the link, you can choose to have the link open in a new tab and make it no follow if you'd like. You can change the alignment of the button, the sizing of the button. Where you see icon, you can select to not have an icon with the button. Where it says upload SVG, you can upload an icon. If you click icon library, you can view icons you can add to the button. You can change the positioning of the icon and more. If you click into an image on the page, click on the image to change the image. You can change the image size, the alignment, a caption if you want to include one, and link out an image if you'd like. Let's scroll down to the next section. If you want to make edits to the background colors of a section, right click on the section. Click edit selection. Click style. Where you see color, click this and you can change the color of that section. I'll choose white for this section. In this section, there is an image with it. So if I hover over the image and click the trash can icon, it'll remove the image. And the section will show the color I chose. Scroll down to this section here. If you want to change an image of a section or add an image for a section, right click in the section. Click edit selection. Click style. You'll see the image if the image is there. This is where you can edit the image. Remove the image by clicking the trash can icon or adding an image if there isn't one there for the section. I'll click choose image. I'll select an image I've already uploaded into WordPress. I'll click the select button to add it. The image is now showing. If you want to add some color along with the image, click the background overlay section, find the color tab. You can now change the color. Drag the opacity to the left or right to get the desired look you want. Next, let's cover a portfolio section for the site. Scroll down to the portfolio section. If you click over the images, you can now edit the portfolio. Click into the images to then upload more images or remove images by clicking the X button. You can change the image size, how many slides to show, how many slides to scroll as well as linking an image to somewhere or adding a caption for the image if you want. Let's say you want a completely different look for your portfolio. Click above the section where you want it to show. I'll click the plus icon. Click the starter templates icon. Click blocks. From the category section, 
click Portfolio. You can now scroll through pre-made portfolio templates you can add to your site to use. If you hover over a block template and click it, you can see it up close. Click the import block to import it to the page. You can now click into the area and start editing how you want it just like I went over in the previous portfolio section. If you scroll down to the next section and hover over the section, you can click the plus icon and then click the plus icon showing again to add a new section to the page. I'll select this one. You can now drag in something over into the section. If you click the middle icon with the dots, you can then edit that section. If you click the X button, it'll completely remove the section from the page. If you click into a section, click the middle icon with the dots, you can drag it up or down to move that section to somewhere else on the page. If you scroll down to the drag widget here section, if you click the starter templates icon, you can click blocks in the menu and then it'll give you lots more page design ideas you can choose from. Up at the top, you can select categories for blocks to show. I'll choose a block to add to the page. I'll click this one and then I'll click the import button to import it to the page to then start adding your own content and editing it how you want it. Now I want to cover the contact us form to show you how this works. I'm here on the editor for the contact page. Click into the form. If you want to make edits to the form, click edit the selected form. You can click the create a new form if you want to create a new form. You can also drag over the WP forms from the side into a section you want it in and do the same process. You just select under form, the contact form. I'm going to click edit the selected form. It's now going to bring up the builder for the contact us form. You can hover over an area to delete it or duplicate it. You can click an area and drag it to wherever you'd like it. If you want to add something, you can drag it over from the side. If you click field options, you can click on a part of the form and then make changes from the side. You can select to make this part of the form a required or not required part to fill out. If you click advanced, you can click the part of the form you want to change and you can select between the size of the form field for that area and then change if you want anything to show in the form field where they input their information. You can click preview to preview the form. Click save to save changes. When you are done, click the X button and you'll be taken back to the editor for the page. If you click settings, you'll be in the general section where you can edit things for the form. Spam protection allows you to toggle on spam protection options. Notifications is where you can put in the email the form info should be sent to in the from email address showing to the person who filled out the form. And the confirmations is where you can put in a confirmation message that shows to the person who filled out the form. I'm back on the editor for the page. Let's get to know the drag and drop editor Elementor better. You'll see publish in the top right. Click this when you want to publish changes you've made to your site. If you click the arrow, you can save the page as a draft or save the page as a template to then use as a template for another page you create. To view changes you've made to your site, click the eye icon and it'll show you a preview of your site. If you click the desktop icon, it'll show you what your changes look like on desktop devices. The tablet icon will show tablet devices and the mobile icon will show mobile devices. If you hover over the site settings icon and click it, you can change things like the colors of your entire site, fonts used, and more. If you click the Elementor menu icon and click history, and then click revisions, 
it'll list out all the revisions for your site that it has pre-saved. If you click one, it'll bring your site edits back to how they were at the time of that edit. If you click the Elementor menu icon and click Manage Website, it'll take you to the WordPress dashboard. If you want to make edits to a certain page on your site, you can click it in the menu and then click Edit with Elementor. To go to the WordPress dashboard, hover over your site title name and click Dashboard. If you hover over the Pages tab, click Add New to add a new page to your site. If you click All Pages, it'll showcase all the pages on your site. If you hover over the Media tab and click on Library, it'll show you all the images you've uploaded in WordPress. If you click Add New at the top, you can then upload or drag in an image into WordPress. If you hover over Post and click Add New, you can create a new blog post for your site. If you click All Post, it'll pull up all the posts you have on your site. If you click the Comments tab, you will see all the comments you have on your blog post. You can easily reply, mark it as spam, or trash the comment. If you hover over the Plugins tab and click Add New, you can then search for or browse plugins to add to your site. Any feature or customization you might want on your site, more than likely there's a plugin for that. If you hover over the Appearance tab in the left side menu, click on Menus. This is where you can edit the menu on your site. You can add new pages to the menu or drag a page to a different order. If you click the tiny arrow, you can change the name of it or completely delete it from the menu. If you want to create a completely new menu, you can click Create a new menu. If you have more than one menu on your site, you'll see the Select a menu to edit. From the drop down, you can select what menu you want to edit by selecting it and clicking the Select button. If you want to have subcategories show in the menu, just add the items to the menu and place it a bit to the right under the menu name you want it to show under. I'll add a few under Portfolio. I'll click Save Changes. I'll now pull up the view of my site and you'll now see the subcategory showing in the menu under Portfolio. Now let me show you how to make edits to the footer area of your site along with uploading a logo, favicon, and other customizations. From the WordPress dashboard, if you hover over the Appearance tab in the side menu and click Customize, you'll be on the Customize page. Click the Footer Builder. You can then click an area in the footer area where you see the pencil icon to start making edits to that section over on the left side. If you click the plus icon, you can then add whatever you'd like to the footer area in that section. If you click the design icon, you can then make additional changes for that section in the footer. You can click the X button to remove that area from the footer. If you click the pencil icon here on the left hand side, you can then choose how many columns you want your footer to be. You can then click the plus icon to add sections to that part of the footer. I'm going to click the back arrow twice. If you click site identity, you can then upload a logo and a favicon, which is the site icon for your site. Click select site icon to then upload your site icon, also known as the favicon for your site. If you click site title and logo settings, you can then change the logo to your own and make other customizations to the logo area for your site. You now know how to access pre-made professional templates, how to create a personal website with WordPress, and making edits to it using the drag and drop editor, Elementor Page Builder. That is my personal website tutorial going over how to create a personal website for beginners step by step. If you have any questions, get in touch in the comments as I'm here to help you with anything you need. Give this video a thumbs up and leave us a comment letting us know if the tutorial was helpful or not as the comments help improve our tutorials. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for more website tutorial videos.